Todd, Johnny Manziel obviously has guaranteed or had guaranteed that he would measure right at six feet. He came in a quarter of an inch shorter than six feet. How much will that concern teams interested in Johnny? You know, I, I get it. It's a story. I mean, the last time we saw a quarterback get drafted in the first round that was under six feet tall was Ted March of Broden, 1953. <laughs> so it is a story. But to me, I kind of expected it, you know, right at six foot, a little, little bit under, not a big difference. I think to a certain degree, you have to admit that Russell Wilson's success has, has helped pave the way a little bit. Uh, I don't think that they're identical players by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but, you know, again, what's the difference between Drew Brees at 6 0 at the Combine and, and Johnny Manziel coming in at 5 one one six? I mean, there's just not a huge difference in my mind. I think the bigger news if you will or the, the bigger measurable is the hand size yep. and that's another comparison you can make with Russell Wilson hand size is one of the more underrated aspects of evaluating the quarterback position I know as a guy who had small hands and was horrible at the quarterback position even at the college level and part of it was because you have trouble gripping the football and guys with bigger hands can spin it better they protect the ball better the ball security especially in rain and mud is a lot better and they are able to use the pump fake a little bit more effectively. And if you look at the numbers with these top quarterbacks, talking about Teddy Bridgewater, Manziel, and Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles was 6'5", 230 plus pounds. He had the, Bortles had the worst fumble percentage of a year ago. He had eight mm -hmm. fumbles. Uh, Bridgewater had three fumbles. And Manziel, who's the smallest of the group, but has the biggest hands at, at close to 10 inch in the hand span, had only two fumbles last year. So I see it all the time. There is a direct co a correlation between being able to spin the ball, being able mm -hmm. to protect the ball, and being able to effectively pump fake when you have bigger hands at that quarterback position. And Todd, how much will Johnny's 40 time matter? And what do you expect that 40 time to be? I probably in the the you know four or fives I guess yeah. Russell Wilson ran a four five five you know maybe at best he runs like a four four eight I I don't care you know what I mean I'm, I see it on the tape over and over again against SEC competition he's he's somewhere in that four four to four five range we know he can run we know he can outrun defenders we know he can buy extra time I, I think what you want to find out from him here and from the rest of the process. How is he in terms of the interview and where do you think he is from a maturity standpoint? And do you have a good rapport with him when you're sitting down? And I think the, the psychologists are going to be huge in this because you have to, if you're Johnny Manziel, you've got to sell the psychologists for the teams that are drafting at the top, starting with Houston at number one, on the concept that, you know, you've kind of gotten all that college stuff out of you, you're maturing, you understand the importance, and that you're ready to go to work. Because, first of all, I don't know any quarterback that's among the elite that isn't one of the hardest working guys on his respective franchise. And secondly, Manziel's entering the league with a lot more to work out in terms of his game than most other high quarterbacks. So if, as a top five pick, if, he's, if he does go in the top five, he's got to become so much better in the pocket with his reads, disciplined with his eyes, disciplined with his mechanics. And that doesn't happen from just wanting it to happen. You've got to be the first guy in, the last guy out. And I think that's the most important part of this process. Does Johnny Manziel Manziel sell any team, just a team, on the fact that he's ready to be that guy. Todd McShay, you brought up the psychologist on, on, on individual teams that have to be convinced to some degree as it pertains to Johnny football. What about what Michael Sams? What about what is he going to have to convince uh, a psychologist for individual teams about? What do you think executives, GMs, are going to be looking for when it comes to him? Well, I think, first of all, his tape has to convince a team that he's worth drafting. I mean, it really comes back to the tape uh, with Michael Sam. To me, I, I've graded him out as a fourth rounder. I don't think that he's a, a full-time starter and every down starter, but he can rush the passer. And, and this is a league with an awful lot of value on guys that can rush the passer. I hear all the time, is he a 3-4 outside backer? Is he a 4-3 defensive end? I don't think it matters. He does one thing very well. He rushes from the outside and gets to the quarterback because of good leverage, relentlessness, some ability to transfer speed to power. And I, I think, to me, if he is in that range of fourth round, and everyone I've talked to in the league has him in that third to fifth round, then you've got to, as you know, when you talk about psychologists in the interviews, is he able to come in and be a part of your team and have no problems. And everyone I talk to at Missouri says he's a you know, model citizen. He's great in the locker room. His teammates love him. I just don't see where 
to be honest with you, where there's any issue outside of where does he fit as a football player on our team and how early are we willing to draft a guy who's not going to be an every down player but can contribute, we think, in terms of rushing the passer situationally. Got it. What about Jadavion Cloudy? How important is, is the NFL scouting combine to him? You know, some guys, some guys are so talented that, you know, the rest of this stuff might not matter that much, if you want the honest truth. Now, you'd love to be sold. You'd love to have your psychologist come back and say, you know, from the tests we went through and the, and the talks we had in that 15-minute period, I really like where his mindset is. I really like, you know, the maturity that he showed and the answers that he gave. Uh, but it's, that may not be the case. I mean, he's, he's not the hardest working guy in the world, but he works hard enough and he's the most talented player in this draft. And there's no one that physically stacks up with what he can do. And his position is among the most important position, the critical positions in the NFL in terms of the ability to get to the quarterback. And I, I think if he's not the number one pick to Houston, he could be the number two pick to a team trading up. Or I know people think I'm crazy to say it. I, I know the Rams love him and think that he's a great player and would consider, even though they have a lot of talent in that defensive front, would consider taking him there because he's just so much better than any other player in this class. Mm.